This is a TV show called Flashpoint. It's on the Victory Network with, uh, you know, it's Kenneth Copeland's Victory Network. Anyways, uh, we've got Gene Bailey, we've got Hank Kuneman, um, Mark Burns, and then a guy named Rick Green. These guys are all televangelists or connected to the televangelist scene in one way or another. The middle two are televangelists, and they believe that Trump is basically God. They believe that he operates for God, in God's wishes and all that stuff. So I want to listen to what these people had to say about Donald Trump, the savior of humanity. And while we listen, we're going to play some uh, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. I'm just kind of doing it in the background. Shouldn't bother you too much if you've never seen it before. All right, let's listen, shall we? need to do right now go to rumble.com slash flashpoint you can watch us there live as well as all of our programs are hosted there uh, why are we pushing rumble i've said it before we'll say it again because we are being suppressed oh so persecuted these people on a gigantic tv network have a huge email list of trump nutcases but they're being suppressed they're being persecuted and challenged and hated these people are a joke. Where the algorithms are not working in our favor. Many of you have complained. You've reached out and said, hey, I, I, I usually get notified when you're live on Facebook. Well, guess what? Not everybody, li I know this is hard to believe, but not everybody likes me and they don't like you. And I know they don't necessarily like Hank. So. Oh my God, dude. This is why you and I, if you want to see all the stuff that's happening on Flashpoint, uh, follow us on rumble.com slash flashpoint. You can always go to our website, govictory.com slash flashpoint, uh, as the program is there as well. We're still live everywhere, but if you want to make sure, it's, if for some reason you're not seeing it, that's where we'll be. All right, so thank you for doing that. Let me welcome to the guest tonight from Frosty North, uh, somewhere in the north. Okay, it's not really that far north. In Nebraska. It's in it's in Omaha, Nebraska. Nebraska, Pastor Hank, you said it's a heat wave going on right now. Thirty five degrees is what wow. we're experiencing. Oh my God, dude. Okay, my wife is from Nebraska. In fact, from that area of Nebraska, Lincoln, Nebraska. It's only forty five minutes from where Hank lives, or where he his church is, or whatever. Anyway, um, my wife is from Nebraska, and if there's one thing I've learned about being around Nebraskans, it's this: there's nowhere colder than Nebraska or hotter. <laughs> Everybody in Nebraska thinks that it's like, they love to talk about how freezing cold it is. It's kind of funny. So here we have an example of Hank talking about how cold it is in Nebraska once again. I mean, he does this bit all the time. On right now. 35 degrees is what wow. we're experiencing. Yeah. So let's go to the other side of the nation, all the way down south, to uh, Rick Green. You're somewhere, you're on a fishing trip, it looks like, uh, out there in the water. <laughs> Doing what I wish. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, my, my wife would wish that. She's a better fisherman than I am. I know that's embarrassing, right? But, uh, but. Why is that embarrassing? A woman being inferior to a man. That's the way of things. Being superior to a man? No. No, it doesn't happen. Yeah, I'm in East Texas, and it's, uh, it's only like 40, but storms and powers going in and out so we're gonna pray it uh, holds up tonight yeah. gene I'm, I'm still in shock that everybody doesn't like you did you did you mean that seriously like is there I, evidence i know that? you find that hard to believe i think they get me confused yeah, with lance wall now i think that's they get me oh, confused oh. that way now that makes sense that, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. That, that makes sense oh my god yeah. so let's go <laughs> way over to the east coast of south carolina my good friend pastor mark burns pastor mark where you been bro Hey man, listen. Uh, we, we 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 we're trying to. We got a country to save, my brother. We got a country to save. We do, and we are right. on the road making it happen, telling the world about Jesus, but That's also right. making sure that we, you know, bring this this nation back to God. And so he, uh, Mark Burns, he appears on a lot of like Reawaken America conferences or whatever. Jim Brewer appears at these things. Eric Trump, Don Jr. I think has been to them. I mean, they have the whole nutcase brigade on these things obviously so he's probably talking about how he went there to those he's been going to those for a while so yeah Amen. i'm here happy Amen. to back. have you back good to have you back well before we get going uh dr alvita king was supposed to be she was scheduled to be our guest tonight alvita king don't know him she's the niece of the reverend dr martin luther king jr the niece of Martin Luther King Jr. is going on this far right extremist show. That is shameful and embarrassing. You know, Martin Luther King Jr. was 
a socialist, right? The King Center announced today that Dexter Scott King, the youngest son of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his wife Coretta Scott King died early this morning at the age of 62 following a valiant battle with prostate cancer. Dexter Scott King, interesting. You know that um, Martin Luther King Jr., wait, when did he die? It was in the 60s, right? Yeah, it was 1968 when Martin Luther King Jr. died. He died in 1968 at the age of 39 years old. He was 39 years old. Interestingly, he was born the same year as Anne Frank. It's a shame and an embarrassment for anybody from the Martin Luther King Jr. family to come on this show. Absolute shame. Disgusting. Dexter King was named after the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Montgomery, Alabama, where his father served as a pastor in the 50s. He was just seven years old when his father was assassinated in 1968. At the time of his death, Dexter served as the chairman of the King Center and president of the King Estate. Our thoughts and prayers are with the entire King family. We certainly... Even the left-leaning ones? Lee. Our condolences, but Pastor Hank, would you please pray for the family right now? Sure. Absolutely. Father, it is written in your word that you comfort those who mourn. And so we're praying now for the King family and all of those. The Dude, I can't even believe these people are praying for Martin Luther King Jr.'s family. That blows me away. Seriously, they are like left-leaning by and large. But th these guys like to pretend that they're right-leaning apparently. Okay. The friends and those that are gathering together at this time to reflect upon a life that has stood once again for those in this country to bring about a dream that, Father, causes all of us to come together, but most of all, to serve you and to honor you. And so we pray not only for comfort, but we pray for your mercy, we pray for your grace to be extended, and we pray for your help in the time of need. Lastly, I pray that you would use this family greater than they've ever been used before as a greater anointing and mantle shall come upon them and wisdom, a crown shall rest upon them. And Lord, they will speak with boldness and this yes. country will be united even as a result. We thank you for blessing them now. So I guess they're going to speak with boldness and the country is going to be blessed. All right. And for touching every single one of them by the power of your Holy Spirit in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Yeshua's name. Interesting that they're using Jesus' actual name. Yesus, I-E-S-O-U-S, -S, was the original name of Jesus in the, um, you know, the Old Test, or I'm sorry, in the New Testament. That's how it was pronounced, Yesus. And um, it was not changed over to Jesus until it passed through Germanic regions where Y's are pronounced like J's, and the I eventually morphed into the J. But it really, it's Jesus. The uh, Hebrew version of it would be Yeshua, though. Jesus, Greek, Yeshua, Hebrew. He probably, or maybe it was Aramaic, I'm not sure. That, he probably walked around pronouncing his name Yeshua, personally. That's just how he said it. God's name was Yahweh. Not Jave or Jehovah or whatever, as Jehovah's Witnesses want to convince people. Anyway, kind of interesting. J's didn't exist back then. It was all I's or Y's. And over time, it was all replaced with um, J's. Amen. 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 We agree with that. You know, God's name is supposed to be like this holy special thing that like nobody else is allowed to say, you know, saying it in vain will get you killed or whatever if it's so special and important it seems to me that people should want to pronounce it correctly not an anglicized version our prayer certainly goes out all right uh well i know you've not heard the news but i'm so glad flashpoint is on a monday night because we get to talk to you about what happened yesterday watch this I think we're talking, uh, this is, this came out January 23rd, I think. So we're talking January 22nd when this happened, I, I believe. Over the past many months, Casey and I have traveled across the country to deliver a message of hope that decline is a choice and that we can, in fact, succeed again as a nation. Nobody worked harder 
and we left it all out on the field. Now, following our second place finish in Iowa, we've prayed and deliberated on the way forward. If there was anything I could do to produce a favorable outcome, more campaign stops, more interviews, I would do it. But I can't ask our supporters to volunteer their time and donate their resources if we don't have a clear path to victory. Accordingly, I am today suspending my campaign. Yeah, so uh, Ron DeSantis suspended and then endorsed Donald Trump immediately after. I remember this. Uh, Nikki Haley is now the front runner. Everybody else, I believe, just dropped out aside from her. So it's Haley versus Trump, basically. And they went on to New Hampshire after this this video came out, I believe. They went on to New Hampshire, the, the New Hampshire primary. And Trump got 54% to Haley's 43%, I think. It was something like 129,000 votes for Haley versus 156,000 to Trump. Something to that effect. And that was, uh, I guess, like a sign to everybody, the Republican Party and news networks and everything else, that Donald Trump controls the party still. But, you know, I don't feel that way. I'm not convinced. When Trump becomes the nominee, the Republican Party is going to stand behind him unequivocally and without question. And because that's that's just what happens, you know, when that happens, it's going to make him even more powerful and uh, integrate him even deeper into the party. Unfortunately, I would love to see Nikki Haley win to kill his stranglehold on the party. But I, I believe that if Nikki Haley won, she would absolutely win against Biden. I think she would take it away. So I'm not sure which one would be better or which one would be worse. We're just in a tough situation either way you look at it. I'm proud to have delivered on 100% of my promises, and I will not stop now. Yeah, 100% of his promises to ban books in Florida and stuff. Absolutely. He actually realizes, Ron DeSantis does, that banning books looks really bad on him. He, uh, he's been putting money into search engine optimization to when people search up book bans or um, Florida book ban or Ron DeSantis banning books or some, anything like that. Those search terms, when they search for those on Google, his website comes up, quote unquote, debunking the idea that he is trying to ban books. Anytime somebody says it about, you know, banning books, the, the claim that he's banning them, he tries to fight that, that claim desperately. He doesn't want to bring that up at all. I find that really interesting. If he was really proud of his record, you would think that he would stand up and shout it from the rooftops, right? Yes, we banned books and blah, blah, blah. No, he hides it. He hides it, hides it under a barrel, fascinatingly. Anyway, um, I don't believe that he has a chance. Nikki Haley might have. And the reason I don't think he has a chance, people realize that he's a far-right nutcase. He might be further right than Trump, surprisingly. If the far-right wants a candidate, it's Trump. They don't have to look for a new one. They don't need DeSantis. That's why his polling went down from like 35% or something the presumptive nominee, all the way down to like 9% or 10% at one point or something like that. People don't want extremism in the party right now, or many don't. It's clear to me that a majority of Republican primary voters want to give Donald Trump another chance. They watch his presidency get stymied by relentless resistance, and they see Democrats using lawfare this day to attack him. Lawfare. Oh, my God. That's a Mike Lindell word. Well, I've had disagreements with Donald Trump, such as on the coronavirus pandemic and his elevation of Anthony Fauci. Trump is superior to the current incumbent, Joe Biden. That is clear. I signed a pledge to support the Republican nominee, and I will honor that pledge. He has my endorsement because we can't go back to the old Republican guard of yesteryear, a repackaged form of warmed over corporatism that Nikki Haley represents. The day so why do you, why does he think Nikki Haley represents corporatism? Honestly, I haven't heard anything negative about Nikki Haley so far, really. I mean, of course, she's a right wing nutcase and she stands behind a lot of Donald Trump's 
ideals. And she's been afraid to say that the Civil War was caused by slavery, for example. There have been some bad things, but she doesn't seem to be like, it doesn't seem to be putting like democracy at risk right now. I don't know. Maybe I just haven't heard enough from her, but she doesn't seem to be moving far right. She's more of a center right candidate, seems to me. Days of putting Americans last, of kowtowing to large corporations, of caving to woke ideology. Kowtowing. Are over. They're over. Uh, let me go to you, Rick Green, before. Okay, these people hated Ron DeSantis. Oh my God, they could not stand the dude up until. Well, presumably now. I don't know what they're going to say about him, but we'll see now that he's endorsed Trump. I mean, Rick Green actually has, to his credit, always said that he liked DeSantis. But the official position on this show has been DeSantis hate. Or you comment, Rick, here, here's my concern. I, I, I really thought if he was going to drop out, he would have waited until after New Hampshire, and here's why. He came in, everybody was saying Nikki Haley would be in second in Iowa. Well, obviously, uh, DeSantis was. So why, it just seems very suspect to me that he would drop out before New Hampshire. Your thoughts? Well, I mean, he just doesn't want to spend more campaign money or do the campaigning anymore, obviously. He wants to, he doesn't want to split the delegates anymore, I guess. No, I, th I think everybody was wanting him to drop out as soon as possible. As soon as the Iowa numbers came in, he's right. The Republican voters were very clearly saying, we're standing with Trump. We're, we're sick and tired of all the indictments. We want to give him a chance to finish out what he started with his first four years. So I, I'm not bothered by the timing at all. I, I think he, he was polling much worse in New Hampshire than he was in Iowa. Iowa was, was his chance to, to show that he could actually uh, hang with uh, President Trump in the race, and it didn't work. Uh, so, look, I think that was a very statesman-like uh, um, report that we just heard from Ron DeSantis. I've said it a long time. He's the greatest governor in the history of America, but he ran up against the fourth best president in American history. And the fourth best president? Is that what he said? Who were the other three? Governor in the history of America, but he ran up against the fourth best president in American history. Who does he believe the best one was, I wonder? I'm going to guess Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, Donald Trump and Thomas Jefferson? I don't know who the fourth would be in there. Reagan, Reagan. Yeah, that's probably who it is. Trump, Reagan, Washington, Lincoln. And I guess Trump falls to the bottom of that list. And I think it's very clear it's not his time. President Trump deserves another shot, uh, and the American people want to give it to him. So Ron DeSantis is not done. We need him to go continue to be the greatest governor in America and show other governors how to stand up to the federal government. Yeah, he did. And, and may I say... So they're they're speaking positively about him right now. And I'm going to go to here, Mark Burns. Uh, you know, what I heard in that was what I used to hear from Ron DeSantis. Uh, I mean, I thought it was very well... And I know it was written out and all that. But I feel like, oh, there's, there's a DeSantis I remember. Your thoughts, uh, Pastor Mark? Well, you know, I think Governor DeSantis did the right thing um, by dropping out. I mean, obviously, uh, many of us within the Trump orbit believe he should have never even ran, but that's uh, water under the bridge. I'm happy that he, they shouldn't have run. Interesting. So he just didn't want DeSantis in the race at all. He has uh, realized that he doesn't have a, a pathway to the presidency and to put his support um, and to encourage his supporters to get behind Donald J. Trump, um, who I believe is, is without a doubt, the greatest president in our lifetime. Um, and so, as I've just been saying across the country, you say, where I've been? Well, I've been in the evil media, the mainstream media, but I'm happy to be in uh, God's, God's uh, new shadow uh, called Flashpoint. Come on, come um, on in. And th <laughs> to talk about um, why Donald J. Trump uh, is a good fit now more than ever, but especially for the believers, because we have to have a president who honors God and Amen. will create laws and push laws and legislations that line up with the with the Bible. And that that's insane. What he's saying is he wants to create laws that line up with the Ten Commandments, apparently. He wants a Christian nationalist state. He wants a state where only Christians are in charge. And if you're not a Christian, then they force you out of the, the country or you're just not allowed to take part in government to some degree. Let me find a clip here. Hold on from this guy. Check this clip out from Mark Burns. Um, absolutely insane. 
any law. Oh, by the way, this is from uh, 2021, uh, November, mid-November 2021. I'm going to tell you, let me go ahead and piss off the mainstream media. Because every time I open my mouth and I say that any law that is, that is a law right now that's contrary to the word of God should be outlawed and abolished in this nation. Do you believe that Jesus should be at the center of American politics in the United States of America? We're here to take over. I can't hear nobody, patriots. We're here to take over. God help me. We're here to take over. We're here to take over. That is insane. Check this one out. I'm excited about the growing movement, especially here in the 4th District of South Carolina, of people who are identifying themselves as just Christian conservatives, right? We got to take it back to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I believe the people here in the 4th District of South Carolina are getting that. It's not just about being Republicans. It's about being a conservative Christian who believes this is a Christian nation and any policy that is contrary to the word of God, we need to remove it from uh, from mainstream America and make it illegal. That is absolutely insane and about as disturbing as it gets. Any law that is not in line with Christianity, erase it. Get rid of it. We should not be instituting laws that are not in line with Christianity. My God, dude. Is that not Christian nationalism? By the way, I keep throwing the ball, and it keeps not working. There. It worked that time, but he attacked me. I think, yeah, I'm just going to have to, like, throw it really hard, apparently. That's kind of annoying, actually. That's what Donald Trump is doing. That's why Christians are supporting him. We're happy this tent dropped out. Go back to Florida. Do a good job there. And pray that you make Florida great as you uh, as President Trump is making America great. All right. Trump is making America great. Totally. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Pastor Hank, I want to get you a chance to weigh in on that. Your thoughts? Hank is uh, very much a, um, a Trump pastor, very much a believer that Donald Trump is like anointed by God, basically. Well, first of all, I want to know. I, I want uh, Rick to know that we feel very bad for him since Rick uh, Ron was kind of his candidate. Is that not correct? Uh, <laughs> oh, he caught some heat for that one too. Yep. Uh, I, I think, think we've been Andrew, saying that from the start. I, yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 okay. I was always behind DeSantis and Trump right. both, and I wanted to see oh, in Iowa yeah, yeah. what the people like of a Iowa politician. Said. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, Mark, I'm sorry. Um, Rick Green is a politician, actually. I believe he was um, a congressman in Texas, maybe. And he ran to be a judge, a ju I think, for the Supreme Court. And he lost. I mean, the, the Texas Supreme Court. He lost and then sued the other candidates in the race for, like, libel and lost his, um, lost his suit, of course. But anyway, yeah, that's the kind of person Rick Green is. All right, here we go. Go All back right. and look at the so tape. We'll, we'll go let back him, and look at the tape. <laughs> we'll, we'll let him have his, have his moment. But here's the real deal. You know, I like what Mark just said, Pastor Gene, and here's why. This is time right now for the Republican Party to begin to unite around the most obvious candidate. You can see God's hand on President Trump. You can also see that the Lord is not done with them. It's obvious by how much that they continue to try to do to President Trump to indict him, to falsely accuse him, and it just continues. Right, to indict Trump and falsely accuse him, totally. Trump is the victim in every situation. That checks out. He's like the three Hebrew boys. He comes out of the fire with- Like the three Hebrew boys. He's probably referencing Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That, that old story in the Bible where the Hebrew boys were- thrown into a they were thrown into like a like a, a furnace and when they looked into the furnace they found that he was they, they were all still alive and fine walking around and there's a fourth figure in there with them without the smell of smoke but the other thing that we're noticing here is the people those that didn't feel like they were heard in the 2020 election this is a protest they are starting to stand up you saw it in iowa i think you're going to see it in new hampshire Oh, so people who voted for Trump in 2020 and feel like the election was stolen are going out and voting for him? Well, that's interesting you say that because Trump won something like 97% of the um, the primary vote, the primary electors, 
in Iowa in 2020, but only won 40 something or 50 something percent this time around, right? What was the result? Uh, in 2020, Trump got 97% of the vote. Yep, 97%. 31,000 people came out and voted for Trump in the Iowa Republican caucuses in 2020. William Weld got 1.3% and one single delegate from it. And Joe Walsh won 1.1% uh, of the vote. And how much did Trump or how many uh, votes did Trump get in Iowa this time around? He got 51% of the vote. 97% to 51%. That is a big difference. And between 2020 and now, Trump, you know, led an insurrection against the Capitol building. He has seized control of the Republican Party in disturbing ways that can't be reversed. I don't know how else to say it. I think the Republican Party is turning on Trump, really. They're trying to, at the very least. They're saying, listen, we never got our vote considered. Also, there's some new people that are jumping on board who have seen the harshness of what has gone on since 2020. Dude, these people are a joke. That has affected open borders, inflation, gas prices, the list goes on and on and on. So they are going towards a Trump train. Now, let me, let me say this. Uh They're going toward a Trump train. Interesting. Then why did Trump get 97% in Iowa in 2020? and only 51% in 2024. This time around, he got way less. I'm sorry, he got way less than that. Only a small percentage of the electors showed up. It ends up being a crazy low actual number, like 7%, right? Yeah, I don't think that Trump is um, on the good side, basically, of the Republican Party right now. And he's got a struggle ahead of him. I know they're going to line up behind him after, you know, he wins the primaries, assuming he wins the primaries. I know that they're going to line up behind him and that's going to change some things. But I, you know, he's hated by a lot of people. Uh, Pastor Gene, quickly, I think of two prophecies that come to my mind. And it's this. God said there would come those that would hate President Trump, even in the political fields that would begin to join him and it would bring a unity to the Republican Party. The second one is God said, I will get involved with Trump. And I when he says I will get in involved with Trump and that's what God said, what he means by that is God gave Hank a message to give to the rest of the world. And the message that Hank delivered to the world was God's going to get involved. So God didn't say anything. Hank said this stuff. This is a joke. I will cause it to go from Donald Trump to Donald Triumph. And I think that's. <laughs> oh, that's painfully stupid. It'll go from Donald Trump to Donald Triumph. Come on. Cause it to go from Donald Trump to Donald Triumph. And I think that's what we're going to continue to see in this country. That's painfully stupid. God is not finished with America. No, he's and not. He's not done with you that's watching. And he's not done with President Trump. I agree. All right. Well, let's speak to President Trump. Here's his comments on uh, Governor DeSantis withdrawing. Watch. Before we begin, I'd like to take time to congratulate Ron DeSantis. Oh, yeah. It's super weird that Trump is like really, really uh, nice to DeSantis all of a sudden. It, it's bizarre to me that it flipped like that. Trump is threatening to jail DeSantis when he wins. And suddenly, just like that, he's best friends with him. And, of course, a really terrific person who had gotten to know his wife, Casey, for having run a great campaign for president. A terrific person, you say? And he did. He ran a, a really good campaign, I will tell you. It's not easy. They think it's easy doing this stuff, right? It's not easy. Not easy being cheesy. Or in Trump's case, it's not easy being sleazy. But as you know, he left the campaign trail today at 3 p.m. And in so doing, he was very gracious and he endorsed me. So I appreciate it. I can't believe that DeSantis endorsed him. Well, I can believe it. It's just disappointing is all. I appreciate that. And I also 
Look forward to working with Ron and everybody else to defeat Crooked Joe Biden. We will have to get him out. We have to get him out. All right. So uh, there was obviously President Trump's comments. I don't know. I still think something's up. I'm just maybe maybe I've been doing this show long enough that I'm looking for that all the time. I think. What does he mean? Something is up. I don't understand. There's more to this DeSantis pulling out than we know. There, I'll leave that there. Look at what does that mean? There's more to DeSantis pulling out than we know. What does he mean by that? I don't understand. What, what's he going on about? Uh, what Matt Gates had to say. We're getting the band back together. Thank you, Ron DeSantis. Uh, obviously, a lot of people are happy to have DeSantis back. Uh, now, here's one. Let me show you Tim Scott and his endorsement. Watch. We need a president today who will stop. Oh, yeah. Who is this guy again? Uh, Rick Scott? Is that what his name is? I forget. He's famously suspected to be gay, and he just recently announced that he has a girlfriend and they're engaged to be married. <laughs> uh, you know, it's sad that he feels the need to cover up his personality, his life, uh, who he is, even if he's not gay and he really is getting married to this person. Why did he feel the need to announce it to everybody? Why was it important to him? Because you don't want people suspecting that he's gay. It's sad that we're here, you know? That it's sad that people can't just be who they are without being like attacked and criticized and suspected of all this other stuff. The crime and recklessness in the streets we need a president who will restore law and order. We need Donald Trump. Oh, we need a president who will lower our taxes and not raise our taxes. Dude, taxes are already low as it is. Are you kidding me? This is such a joke. We need a president like Donald Trump. We president who understands the American people are sick and tired of being sick and tired. We need, we need. Wow, he's actually pretty good at like revving up a crowd, seems to me. I mean, not flawless, but that that's pretty good. The president, our foreign adversaries are afraid of. And our allies respect. Really? He thinks that our allies respect Donald Trump? You've got to be kidding me. The United States is feared. Even under Obama, under um, Bush, under like all the past presidents all the way back to, honestly, since forever, practically. Because we're a superpower in the United States. And we're not beneath bombing people for absolute, absolutely no reason. For example, right now we are outraged and horrified to see that 20,000 or so people have been killed in Gaza, right? That's horrific stuff. 20,000. Do you know how many civilian deaths there were in Iraq. Estimates are between 280,000 and 315,000 deaths, civilian deaths in Iraq. And that was a completely trumped up war with absolutely no basis in reality. It was a lie. The whole thing was a lie. There was no, you know, yellow cake uranium there were no weapons of mass destruction in iraq it was all fabricated and we killed at least 300,000 people there innocent civilians there so who is really the terrorist nation in the world we are losing our minds right now over the fact that palestinians are being subjected to genocide i agree they are <clears throat> but we forget the fact that america did that exact thing not so long ago we need you see we need a president who doesn't see black or white really 
did he not see black or white when he was refusing to rent to black tenants in the when was it 70s 80s i think and was sued by the government for it was he seeing black and white back then we see a, a president who sees americans as one american family we need and that's why i came to the very warm state of new hampshire very warm i assume it was really cold there at the time okay to endorse the next president of these United States, President Donald Trump. Okay, well, I wasn't expecting a wrestler intro, but thank you for that. All right, uh, Rick, you know, I'm sitting here listening to all these people endorse him, and there, there's so many more that have come. You know, this is a guy that has been indicted. He's had his mug shot all over the place. He hey, Trump, yeah, that has happened. Keeps getting mean. Uh, he's had Mar-a-Lago raided. I mean, Mar-a-Lago, okay. I mean, it's, it's still kind of bizarre <laughs> that he's so far <laughs> out in front, don't you think? <laughs> Well, you know, Gene, we called it here on Flashpoint last summer with one of the first indictments. You you asked me, you said, Rick, how is he going to how's he going to keep the schedule up doing campaign events as, and then also going and doing uh, hearings and having to go to all these trials? And I Dude, th this I, I think I'm too far away from the um, the switch. And so it's not like throwing correctly. That's like a massive flaw in this game, seems to me. This game should really not rely on the motion controls that heavily campaign events is, and then also going and doing uh, hearings and having to go to all these trials and i said well the hearings are going to be campaign events gene he's, he, and the mug right. shots are going to become the the campaign material because we knew we talked about it here on the program hanks talked about it prophesied about it justice people prophesied about it people are drawn to justice they want to see the injustice stop and so we knew he was standing between us uh, and these leftists, and that he was uh, it represented uh, the worst of the injustice and the two-tier justice system. And so that's, I believe, I still believe that's the that's the thing that really turned the race around. I just got to say one more thing, Gene, about the other candidates that, that ran. I think a lot of people ran, including Ron DeSantis and Tim Scott, uh, not knowing for sure what was going to happen with Trump, almost like right. being there just in case. Right. He did end up health failing at his, at his age or possibly not even run. Right. Uh, all the, there were just a lot of factors out there. I don't think it makes any of them bad guys. I sure. think they're, they're, they are part of the same team. I think So I guess he's okay with people running just in case Trump's health fails. Nikki Haley does represent the wrong part of the party. How? How does Nikki Haley represent the wrong part of the party? This makes no sense. What we want on Flashpoint and, and for Biblical Worldview folks, we don't want more wars. We don't want all the corporate corporatism that, that she represents. So now it's going to be a very, very clear choice. Which one, I think it's good that he got out before tomorrow because you have that very clear choice. I think Trump's going to win big tomorrow and, and probably just sweep the whole thing from here on out. I don't think he'll, he'll lose. Oh, I love it. They were talking about uh, Trump going to um, New Hampshire. And the New Hampshire results are out. Trump, 54%. Nikki Haley, 41 or something like that. That's not sweeping the board in my mind. That's pretty close. 160,000 or so to 130,000, somewhere in there. I don't remember exactly what it is, but the, it was really, it was a lot closer than I expected it to be, honestly. I thought Trump's going to get 70, 80%, and he didn't. Yeah, that was roughly at 130 to 160, uh, somewhere in there. Nikki Haley was a lot closer than I thought she'd be. Who's one single primary? No, I don't think so either. Uh, let me go to you, uh, Mark Burns. Uh, you know, Rick actually brings up a very good point about Trump's success, uh, you know, with justice. Is that what you think? Uh, speak to that. Trump's success with justice. What the hell does that mean? Well, I mean, of course. I mean, just look at the our numbers within the black community, especially within black men, because the injustice system that has happened to Donald Trump, the billionaire Donald J. Trump, 
Black men are seeing in larger numbers. We're polling at 22, 23% amongst African-American men in support of Donald Trump. You understand that's pretty much unheard of since Richard Nixon, right? And so when we see a two-tier justice system that is happening against Donald Trump, and, you know, again, the, you know, CNN asked me yesterday, why is Donald God, Trump is such a victim. Donald Trump still doing so well. You know, they hate uh, over there the Clinton News Network. Why in the world is he still doing well? I oh, CNN. And Clinton News Network. Okay, I get it. Said very simple, because the hand of God is upon Donald J. Trump. The Bible says that God raises up who He desires, and so the fact of the matter is that no matter how much they have hit him, Donald Trump is still moving full steam ahead, because the hand of God is upon his life. But what's scary right now is why we need to have him back now. Do you see what's happening in your state of Texas right now with Governor Abbott and the border and now the Supreme Court just now? Uh, uh oh, I forgot about that. Oh, my God. This is a crazy thing happening right now. Oh, damn. Pidgey ran away. OK. Hold on. Greg Abbott, basically, from my understanding, is defying the Supreme Court. He said, no, we're not doing what the Supreme Court said. <clears throat> By the way, this is territory in which it would be justified for Biden to deputize the or claim, I guess, reclaim the Texas National Guard for the United States, for the federal government and force Abbott out of office. I think Abbott is intentionally doing this right now to force Biden to do something um, that would look really, really bad. If Biden does anything about this situation, anything at all, then he's going to look terrible. It's going to be harder for him to get, you know, win the election or whatever. Greg Abbott basically was putting razor wire in the river, the Rio Grande River, I believe, that people were crossing to come into the United States. Razor wire, cutting people up like like scissors. And um, the Supreme Court basically said, you can't do that. You must take this down. And Abbott just said, no, that's it. No, I'm not doing that. I'm not taking it down. It stays up. That's insane. What Governor Abbott and the border, and now the Supreme Court just now, uh, it's, it, 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 and people are whispering the word "civil war" has now made it uh, the, the, the make sure that those uh, federal agents cut the wire, letting those illegals in. That active invasion that is happening. And okay, they're not supposed to be letting illegals in, quote unquote. They're just not allowed to throw razor wire into a river so it cuts people to pieces when they try to to come over refugees by the way not immigrants refugees people who are legally required to be granted access to a refugee center to apply for asylum because of all of the terrible stuff that they've been through war-torn areas and stuff like that wouldn't that be grounds to rest to arrest him on treason? I don't think it's treason, but it's at the very least, I would say sedition, or refusal to work within the bounds or expectations of government, resisting government orders. Yeah, I would say sedition is probably the right word. I think that's what he's doing. If Biden does a single thing about it, it's going to make him look terrible, no matter what, and it's going to lose the election for Biden. This is just wrong. In Texas, in your state that you're in, this is why Donald J. Trump needs to come back. This is why no matter how hard they hit him, no matter what the indictments come out, he keeps rising in the polls. Nikki Haley is the former governor of my state here in South Carolina. And I can tell you in South Carolina, this is absolutely Trump territory. Many didn't like her as a governor. He's just like cheerleading for Donald Trump shamelessly and just lying for him. And they didn't like her as an ambassador. And I remember her phrase, she, she was popular among Republicans in South Carolina. It's only now that people are like saying that they don't like Nikki Haley. And it's only because she's running against Trump. That simple. And now she's trying to be president 
she's going to be embarrassed. Our prayer is that she drops out before she even gets to South Carolina so she's not so embarrassed in her own state. <laughs> Our prayer is she drops out before South Carolina so she's not embarrassed. Wow, dude. Well, uh, it sounds like they're scared to me, right? Does it sound like they're scared to anybody else? It's going to be exciting uh, to watch for <laughs> sure. So, listen, we're going to be there every step of the way. Tomorrow night, we will cover what's going on in the New Hampshire uh, primary. You don't want to miss any of that. Uh Again, Trump won by 54%. Trump won with 54%. Haley got 44 or something. As we give you the results all the way up to the last minute, we'll be covering it all during the show tomorrow night. Uh, but it's not just the black vote. It's not just the white vote. It's the Latinos. Look at this. New York Post posed as Trump now edges Biden among New York Latinos as the migrant crisis rages. And uh, they quote a poll there. I, I mean, Pastor Hank, you see this. This is, uh, I, I really do believe, and maybe Rick can speak to this in just a minute, but I want to get your input. You know, I wonder with this, all the open border, all the stuff that uh, Mark Burns is talking about, did they really? The border is not open. I just, I feel like I, I need to put this on record. The border is not open. Okay, the border policy is basically no different now than it was under Donald Trump effectively, except we're not separating children from their parents anymore. I think that the Latino vote was gonna come in here and swing the vote uh, to the liberal side. If that was the case, and I have nothing to say that it was, if that was their idea, it surely has not worked. It, think about what they're talking about right now. This is valuable to listen to this, to understand what they think the strategy that'll work will be. Which strategy are they using? Which issues are they focusing in, uh, focusing in on? You notice they're not talking about abortion. You notice they're not saying, if we get Trump back in office, we'll get an, a national ban on abortion and all the children will be saved and blah, blah, blah. They're not talking about it at all. Interesting, right? They're talking about the border because they believe that the border is the one thing that freaks people out more than anything at all. And if they can get people worked into a blood frenzy over it, then they believe that they'll win. When I say they, I mean these people on screen here. They know that abortion is a losing issue for them. So we can expect them to talk about the border nonstop. I do think that they were considering that as well as they're looking to, you know, make those that are coming across open borders, right. you know, give them. They're not open. Access to vote. I do think that's part of giving people who cross over the border access to vote. They can't. They're not allowed to vote until seven years down the line. They have to like go through a seven year long process, not to mention the whole thing about learning our political system and taking tests and applying for this and that and blah, 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 holding down a job for all this time. It's hard to become a U.S. citizen and even harder to earn the right to vote in the U.S. We're born with that. They have to work their nuts off for it. And in addition to all of that, there isn't a guarantee by any stretch of the imagination that these people are going to vote for Democrats when they finally get the right to vote, if they ever try. <clears throat> you know, depending on where the immigrants are from, they're more likely to vote Republican in, in many cases. Like if they're from Cuba, for example, they have been propagandized hard about socialism being evil, quote unquote. And they'll do whatever it takes to prevent socialism from taking root, even if that's voting for Donald Trump, people who hate them. So this is just fabricated nonsense, and I feel I need to point that out. Crossed open borders, right. you know, give them access to vote. I do think that's part of their agenda. But here's the real deal. You know, among the Latino community, you know, you talk to great people like Pastor Tony Soares, for example, who's here on Flashpoint. You talk to Pastor Sammy Rodriguez, who's also been on Flashpoint. And they will tell tell you, I've heard them say it, that obviously the, the Latino community, they're very family oriented. They're also, uh, there's a draw to God. They really want God. And I think those two factors, they're seeing in President Trump that he is a man who represents God to this country. He's not afraid to use the name. 
It's insane to me that people believe that Trump is like a godly person. Jesus Christ in a very positive way, but he's also about America first, which means their families. And when the Biden administration and these, these fake administrators were doing what they're doing by causing the harshness where baby formula, for example, was uh, unreachable, it was unaffordable. Oh my God, still talking about baby formula. Affordable, gas prices. This has touched many, many communities, but many, many families. And I think even the Latino community, and they're saying, you know what? It really doesn't matter. We want somebody that's gonna represent us. I Dude, I love that they're, they, I love all the stuff they said about baby formula. It was fascinating to watch them propagandize about that. I don't know if you guys remember this, but um, back in, uh, let's see, when was it? 2022, yeah, May, 2022 there was this whole baby formula thing because there was a shortage. I don't remember what the shortage was caused by. Um, something about maybe it was caused by like underproduction and then there was like a run on the market because people were afraid that they wouldn't have any. Um, I don't remember exactly what it was about. But anyway, the level of insanity that ensued as a result of the baby formula um, shortage was absolutely unparalleled. Listen to Mark Taylor, QAnon prophet. He's had like a movie made about him and everything talking about, li listen to him talk about the formula shortage, uh, May, 2022. When politicians go to Washington, DC, the district of Columbia, this is why they lose all wisdom. Columbia is another name for bail, the district of bail. They are working for and under the protection of the District of Bale, whose food source is the aborted babies. Do yeah. you think it's a coincidence that they are creating a food shortage for us? Did they know ahead of time that we were going after Roe versus Wade? They are going after our food sources because we are going after theirs. That's insane, dude, and disgusting on so many levels. They're going after who's they, by the way. I have no idea, but. They are going after baby formula because we, I guess, me included, question mark, like to eat babies. And we can't do that now because abortion was brought to an end when it, it wasn't fully brought to an end. So, God, I don't even know, dude. This is just insane. Everything about this is insane. That, that's the caliber of person that we're dealing with. Beautiful which is the babies. The babies. Do you think it's also tied into this baby formula shortage? Because right. it's so ironic yep. that we're talking about what you just said. Food source. And, and, and food, the food source yep. of the babies is now being cut off. There, it's almost mm. like the devil is trying to starve the, the babies that are living to death because the aborted issue is about to be cut off very soon. Anyway, these people are insane, and they desperately need help, like, immediately. So that's what Hank Kuhneman was talking about. Many, many communities, but many, many families, and I think even the Latino community, and they're saying, you know what? It really doesn't matter. We want somebody that's going to represent us. I do want to say this very quickly, Pastor Gene, going back to something that Rick Green said about the indictments with President Trump. And uh, God prophesied, I'm holding up these feathers again, that with all these indictments, listen carefully, this is what's going to happen. And hopefully those... Yeah, this is a whole bit that Hank does. He holds up feathers as like a, I don't know what you call it, like a, an illustration tool or whatever. Those that are indicting him are going to see this. It's all going to fall like feathers, and it isn't going to stand. Indictments are going to fall like feathers and not going to stand. Okay. Well, he said that about um, the like Biden's vote count. Biden's vote count is going to fall like feathers. His polling is going to fall like feathers. So one day, you just wait and see, God's going to set it all right. Because you're touching something that is bigger than all of you. Even those journalists, those fake news. Touching something bigger than all of us, which is God, of course. When you're dealing with Trump, you're dealing with God, is what he's saying. I don't think he believes that Trump is actually, literally God. But I think he believes that like Trump is chosen by God. You're messing with God, and you're going to lose every single time. Dude, I'm pointing the damn thing that way. Why is it? All right. Why is it going off in the other direction? I don't understand what's happening. I'm running out of balls over here. 
time when you touch something that God has involved himself in. It's not just about Donald Trump. It's about a country that God is committed to and a people who've prayed and the Lord has answered with his justice. Yeah, and the Lord has answered with his justice. So that means that Trump should not have indictments against him, not be charged with crimes, and he should be, you know, in the presidency right now, right? If God answers with his justice, what happened? Thank you for saying that, uh, Pastor Hank, because this <clears throat> isn't the uh, Trump channel. Uh, oh, it definitely is the Trump channel. Uh, however, right. it is exactly, that is exactly what we're thinking and believing for the right thing for America. Rick, how do you see this all playing out? Well, to what you just said, it, it is so important for us to remember. We're, we're in this for the principles, not for any person. It just so happens that Donald Trump is the guy representing the principles. And if No, they're in it for the guy. This has always been about Donald Trump this entire time. That's all they talk about. Trump, 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 Trump. If it was somebody else representing the principles, we'd still be for the principles, not the personality. That's the right biblical way to do this. But to, but to your question earlier about... Dude, I can't even believe they're trying to deny their love for Donald Trump as like a person. You know, the Hispanic community and their response to the open border and their response to Donald Trump being willing to close that border or secure that border, I should say. Think about it this way. It, it, Again, they're talking about the border nonstop because they think that's what's going to get them a win. The border is no different now than it was under Trump. If you buy it... I'm sorry, no, the border policy is no different now than under Trump. Ticket to go to the Super Bowl and, and other people that bought tickets to go to the Super Bowl are all, you know, starting to go in and they just open the gates to anyone to come in for free. And now you don't even have a seat or the place is overrun. The game's not even going to happen. Even someone like a Philadelphia Eagles fan can figure out that that's not right. That's not fair. That's not just. It's wrong. And so I think anyone, red, white, yellow, black or brown, whatever the color of their skin, wherever they came from, that loves America that loves, as Mark was saying, the family unit, and as Hank was talking about, they do not want to see this country overrun and, and, and totally torn apart and diluted by the cartels and all the other junk that's coming across with the families that want to have a, have a, a, a piece of America and have the American value. It's Dude, look at, look at the background. It's beautiful, right? It looks like there's a lake back there. Really nice. Yeah, um, this is all complete garbage, all of it. Been overrun by the bad and they know that and they get that and donald trump's been the only one in a long time i mean remember in 2016 guys yeah. he was articulating the border thing in 2016 it that's was right. the number one thing in his platform so he's been the only one that said i don't care if you're republican or democrat we've got to do the right thing here and that finally now eight years later uh, i believe we're going to have the momentum to get it done when he wins in 2024 all right so if you are from philadelphia uh you can contact rick if you didn't like that comment rickgreen.com uh oh my god dude uh patriot academy all right uh let's let me let me go to another article with the new oh, these people are insufferable new york post get off this dangerous territory uh now this guy okay i don't like his name charlemagne the god oh charlemagne the god okay there's something really interesting about charlemagne the god okay they're about to talk about him and this is kind of interesting to me if you don't know charlemagne the god He's a rapper, a famous rapper, and as it turns out, he's an ex-Jehovah's Witness. I didn't know this until I was doing research for my book. I found a clip of him talking about it, about being an ex-Jehovah's Witness. Uh, let me just show you what... Did I really not download the clip? I didn't, apparently. I meant to download it. I just cited it rather than download it. Hang on, let me get it. Now, you, you were raised Jehovah's Witness. Mm -hmm. So was I. You were absolutely. My mom still goes to the, my mom still goes to the Kingdom Hall to this Wait, day. Wait, what? <laughs> See, there's a connection that forms between two ex Jehovah's Witnesses. There's a, a link that isn't shared between non Jehovah's Witnesses and you know um, and ex Jehovah's Witnesses. It's just it's something that's kind of inexplicable. Like you know, you know, you know what Charlemagne the God went through what he did what he experienced and he knows what you experienced you know there's something there that's not there with others sadly that link can be broken nearly instantaneously as you'll see in a second you see in this link form right now she's so excited to find out that he understands what she went through raised jehovah witness mm -hmm. so was i 
You were? Absolutely. My mom I did still not goes know to the, that. My mom still goes to the Kingdom Hall to this Wait, day. Wait, what? <laughs> yes. I did not know yes, that. Yes, yes. So does mine. So how, how strict was your upbringing? Very. Yeah, because you was named... Well, I'm saying sh- overprotective. I can just use the... Now you know what I'm talking about. Like, you know, there's a link. Okay. Yeah. Also, I was the only... You know, there's a link. She understands. He understands. They understand each other. My kid that was born and raised in it. You know what I mean? Wait, that's not true. Me and my young, my brother closest to me, the rest of them weren't, like, raised Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh, no, I was a whole family. What? Oh, yeah, I had the whole righteous, ratchet mom and dad. So my dad ended up getting this fellowship because he got baptized knowing he had no business getting I baptized. Believe- and that's the moment I realized that he still believes it. My dad got baptized knowing he had no business getting baptized. If the dude got baptized as a Jehovah's Witness, then he believed it probably more fervently than anybody else. There is no he had no business getting baptized. If he didn't have business getting baptized, the elders would not have allowed it in the first place. But it sounds to me, tentatively, like Charlemagne the God is still invested in this religion. In this conversation right now. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, Charlemagne the God, ex-Jehovah's Witness, had no idea about that until I was writing for my book, and it's so sad. Let's listen to what Charlemagne has to say here. He ain't. Oh, these people just, they cannot stand rap music, by the way. Oh, my God. Do another article with the New York Post, get off this dangerous territory. Uh, now, this guy, okay, I don't like his name. Charlemagne, the God, you know, he ain't God, but says working class people extremely frustrated with migrants and Biden's to blame for the border mess. Eh? This is really sad. Yeah, watch this. I have the privilege, man, of, uh, you know, doing morning radio and speaking to, you know, working class people every single day. I have the privilege of, you know, being involved in my community from, you know, New York to New Jersey to South Carolina, where I get to look people in the eyes and have, you know, real conversations, you know, with them. Yeah, and totally. Uh, Those people are 100% representative of broader society, right? You don't run a right-wing or a right-leaning podcast or anything like that. You're totally 100% fair and balanced and right down the center. So there's no reason for anybody that you talk to to lean right. It's just representation of society. Absolutely. And, and you know, people are really concerned about this issue. Like, I've, I've, I honestly have never spoken to as many people who are concerned about the migrant issue as I have, you know, o- over the past year. And, I mean, I've heard everything from, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, the gang MS-13, you know, uh, overrunning neighborhood. Oh my God, dude! MS-13 was is the name of a gang, and it was like the fear mongering tactic used by Republicans back in when was it 2020 or was it 2016? I don't even remember. But they were screaming about MS-13 taking over everything and everybody, and they're out to get us and all this other junk. It was insane. It's just more border fear-mongering nonsense, as usual. I've heard, um, you know, what we saw just happened in New York City, where the migrants, they took 2,000 migrants and, and, and put them in the school and made the school stay home. Made this Dude, what the hell are they talking about? The students stay home and, 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 and uh, you know, do school via, via, via Zoom, and that was a big issue. Dude, I have no idea what he's even going on about right now. I live in New York City. I live in Manhattan. My kid goes to school in Manhattan. I am just lost. This guy apparently also lives in a fantasy land where the world is out to get him and all of the people to the right of him or whatever, where he's persecuted for being right wing. This is so sad, dude. Seriously. This is so disappointing to know that an ex Jehovah's Witness is this far down the rabbit hole. Like, I mean, people were calling the radio station. That was just this week, you know, really, really, really complaining about that. So I've never seen, you know, working class people who I interact with every day until this past year really, really, really express their frustration for the migrants. And it's not even just the people. Like, you see politicians who once, you know, championed having the migrants in the city, like the mayor, Eric Adams of New York. Now they're like, yo. Eric Adams is a Republican. Uh, he pretends not to be, but he absolutely is. He's also a Christian nationalist. He's, had, he's said some bizarre shit over the years. Eric Adams has. Oh, my God, dude. Eric Adams has said things like he believes that 
New York City is built. Why is the the ball going way off into the corner right now? I don't understand what's happening. Why is this happening? Why? I, I'm throwing it exactly down the center. Do I have to like throw it off to the side or well, like I don't. I don't get what's happening right now. Anyway, Eric Adams has said he believes that Manhattan was built on gems, you know, special gems that alter the personality of New Yorkers, basically. It's insane. And, dude, I, I have no clue what's happening. I'm throwing it, like, dead down the center. Why was the ball just going off into the corner? Am I missing something? Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with this. Maybe it's my controller. I have no clue. My other controller is doing it, too, though. Politicians who once, you know, championed having new migrants in the city, like the mayor Eric Adams of New York. Now they're like, yo, hold up. This is this is too much. You know, we've heard Vice President Kamala Harris say, hey, don't come. Like, we've, we've, we've seen that. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a real, 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 you know, uh, real big issue. All right. Just insane and sad. So sad that this guy is just is so deep in the rabbit hole. See, again, why is the ball going? I, I'm, I'm throwing it right down the center and it just keeps on going off to the side. Is it am I missing something? Am I doing this wrong or something? Like what? Just a buggy game. OK, I guess it's just buggy. That's really annoying. That was absolutely terrible. Pastor Mark, I, I, before you come, I want you to comment on that. But it seems like we're suddenly hearing all of these people that would not say anything before now coming to the forefront. And uh, I would say Biden bashing, uh, you know, where were they a few years ago? But I, I, nevertheless, I mean, they've just been propagandized over the course of the past four years. Uh, honestly, over the past eight years. Or, or longer than that, truthfully. It's just nonstop propaganda being fed into these people. And the more they the more people they capture, the better in the, the far right's mind. That's just what they're working on, trying to capture people like they did Joe Rogan. They captured him. It's insane. Let you comment. <laughs> you know, Joe Rogan watched uh, he watches videos all the time of trans people walking into bathrooms who are not, you know, for example, I was watching recently Joe Rogan saw a video of. A trans person supposedly walking into a bathroom had a full beard and was arguing with a woman because she wanted to go into the bathroom and the woman didn't want her to basically. Well, it turns out that was staged. It was fake. Not satire, but I don't know what I guess you're just a fake video. It was all set up to play out that way. And Joe Rogan fell for it. Jamie, Joe Rogan's uh, producer, a few minutes later, after Joe Rogan spent like 20 minutes talking about how disgusting it is that trans people can go and do whatever they want, Jamie jumps in and says, yeah, that's fake. And he's like, wow, they're really good actors. They're captured by this nonsense. It's nonstop garbage. They buy into the most bizarre framing. They believe videos without question. No critical thinking skills here. But Gene, I'm going to tell you this. First of all, uh, you know, I'm happy to hear that Charlemagne and I never call him the God. As a matter of fact, you know, uh, I wish he was this kind to me uh, back in 2015, 2016 and 2020. Right. He was not kind to me at all. But I am. happy. Maybe he realized how much of a nutcase you were. You know, I get the impression that Charlemagne the God probably like stands for the black community in addition to believing that Trump is the, the biggest and the best, uh, apparently, or believing that the border is terrible at the very least. But, and that's probably why he didn't like Mark Burns. I don't know. I don't know what his interaction was with Mark Burns. Happy. He is now singing to a new tune. Um, I told him to his face, you are not a God. There's but one living God and his name is Yeshua. Oh my God. Wait. His name is Jesus. I thought that, well, I guess some people believe in the Trinity. He probably believes in the Trinity. So that makes sense. Jesus, our Messiah. So, but I digress. 
but I am happy that he is, uh, you know, with this very popular platform, the Breakfast Club, um, where you know Hillary Clinton infamously was, you know, was was pandering after the African American community with her hot sauce comment. Um, that is his show that he is hot sauce comment. Uh, one of the main hosts on, and I'm happy to see that uh, again. It, it surpasses race at this point. The problems that the Biden administration with the border is doing is surpassing race. See, they're just like dead set on believing that the border is a problem, that it's, go you know, it's coming down around us. Everything is falling apart because the border is open when it's not open. These people are insane. They're absolutely obsessed with the idea that Biden is just throwing the, the doors wide open, letting everybody in that wants in because they recognize this is a useful strategy to them when i say they i mean the people on flashpoint specifically people on flashpoint recognize this as a useful strategy so they're not going to shut up about the border and to be honest not going to say a word about abortion or not not many words at least but the border oh yeah they'll talk about that one that the Biden administration with the border is doing is surpassing race. And to be honest, the first people that is affected by this mass migration or illegal immigration or the that's not happening. This active invasion that is happening um, at the southern border are lower income communities, Hispanic communities, black communities. And so where are a lot of these jobs, these skilled labor jobs that used to be uh, catered, not so much catered, but geared towards skilled hand workers uh, are going to illegal immigration, immigrants. And so, uh, again, I'm happy that he's singing a new tune. Um, but again, um, you know, uh, he has some very choice words about me uh, and my Uncle Tom status. And I'll be honest with you, I'm a proud Uncle Tom, right? I'm proud to be an Uncle Tom. He wow. Are, are you hearing this? Did you hear what this guy just said? You know, uh, he has some very choice words about me uh, and my Uncle Tom status. And I'll be honest with you, I'm a proud Uncle Tom, right? I'm proud to be an Uncle Tom. He was. That's insane. Guy just said, I'm proud to be an Uncle Tom. Was a, he was a champion for, for his people. And, but I'm happy that Charlemagne is finally um, speaking out and positive to the, 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 the immigration situation. Because, again, it's not about the color of your skin. It's simply a right or wrong situation issue. And right now, this active invasion that is happening uh, under the Biden watch right. is affecting everybody. There isn't an invasion happening, certainly not under Biden's watch. This is fabricated. My God, dude, these people live in another reality. They want to take the border one step further. They don't want to just say, wow, there are a lot of people coming into the country and that's bad. They want to turn it into something more, claiming that it's uh, an invasion, that there's a group of people out there who's sending basically a, a group of militants, military fighters over the border as immigrants and refugees so that they can organize into an army and when the moment is right, strike. Insane. Regardless of it whether is. you lean left or you lean right, it's, it's affecting everybody, Gene. Yeah, and you bring up a great point, uh, Mark. Uh, Rick, you know, it is affecting everybody. Do you do you think that's why we're seeing suddenly the push towards uh, to the right? Yeah, I, th I think it's helped a lot that these uh, big cities that had you know wanted to be sanctuary cities, they're now having to live with their bad policy. That's what always happens on the left. It looks great on paper, right? It's a great idea. It sounds good in a speech, and then the reality of it hits. And people go, this was terrible. I love the fact, Pastor Mark. Like, what is he talking Mark, about? That you I'm sorry. What is he talking about? The left? He says, the left looks good on paper, and then it looks, you know, it ends really badly. What is he going on about right now? What is this? You know, Uncle Tom was the good guy in Uncle Tom's cabin. <laughs> we want more Uncle Toms that love the Lord and stand for the Lord. Anyway, that was fantastic. Oh, my God, dude. That is, that is insane. I got to write this down. Uncle Tom was the good guy. We need more Uncle Toms. If you guys don't know the story of Uncle Tom, hang on. I wish I could pause this. I can't, apparently. Let me just try to... Okay, here. This is the, um, the Wikipedia page for Uncle Tom. This is what it means. Uncle Tom is a character 
of Harriet Beecher Stowe's 1852, the title character of Harriet Beecher Stowe's 1852 novel, Uncle Tom's Cabin. Character was seen by many readers as a groundbreaking humanistic portrayal of a slave, one who uses non-resistance and gives his life to protect others who've escaped from slavery. However, the character also came to be seen as an inexplicably wait as inexplicably kind to white slaveholders, especially based on his portrayal in pro compassion dramatizations. Okay, wow. I didn't actually know about this cuz I haven't read it. This led to the use of Uncle Tom, sometimes shortened to just a Tom, as a derogatory epithet for an exceedingly subservient person or well, you know, I it's for educational purposes I feel like I can say it, or a house negro, particularly one aware of his or her own lower class racial status. Malcolm X has talked about this, the house Negro and the field Negro, the difference between the two. Here you go. This is the video of Malcolm X talking about it. Back during slavery, when black people like me talked to the slaves, they didn't kill them. They sent some old house Negro along behind him to undo what he said. You have to read the history of slavery to understand this. There were two kinds of Negroes. There was that old house Negro and the field Negro. Without comment, I don't feel I need to add anything to that. Malcolm X said it all himself, succinctly. That's the difference between the two. Malcolm X had issues, too. Make no mistake. Oh, absolutely. He mo most definitely 100% did. Malcolm X had a lot of problems. But every now and then, he busted out something absolutely phenomenal like that. Original characterization and critical evaluations of Uncle Tom. At the time of the novel's initial publication in 1851, Uncle Tom was a rejection of the existing stereotypes of minstrel shows. Stowe's melodramatic story humanized the suffering of slavery for white audiences by portraying Tom as a young, strong, Jesus-like figure who is ultimately, or, I'm sorry, who's ultimately martyred, beaten to death by a cruel master, Simon Legree, because he refuses to betray the whereabouts of two women who would escape from slavery. Stowe reversed the gender conventions of slave narratives by juxtaposing—I'm sorry—by juxtaposing Uncle Tom's passive uh, passivity against the daring of three African American women who escaped from slavery. So anyway, um, I guess Uncle Tom represents somebody who is subservient to the oppressors. Is that fair to say? Fantastic. Again, I've never read the book, so I'm just trying. I'm going off of what I'm kind of picking up here. It seems like it's about somebody who is subservient, even though he was terribly mistreated. Fascinating. I guess he's like a Jesus character, kind of. Yeah, Jesus was beat to shit by people in the Bible, and for no reason, and mistreated and hated and everything, even though he was like calm and nice and all that. I love the fact, Pastor Mark that you know Uncle Tom was the good guy in Uncle Tom's cabin. <laughs> we want more Uncle Toms that love the Lord and stand for the Lord. Wow, we want more Uncle Toms. More people who just act subservient and quiet and just allow whatever happens to happen. Totally. Anyway, that was fantastic, but I'm I'm so <laughs> old. When you mentioned the Breakfast Club, I thought you were talking about Emilio Estevez and Judd Nelson and Molly Ringwald, so I, I'm just completely out of touch, I guess. <laughs> He's talking about the Breakfast Club. Oh, my God, yeah. Breakfast Club is um, Charlemagne the God's uh, podcast, I think, and he's had some real nutter butters on there. Like, well, I don't remember his name, but he's had him on there, and I've talked about him on here too before. Anyway, yeah, the Breakfast Club is insane, and I think Charlemagne the God runs it. Yeah, no, uh, no, Charlemagne is a voice, and <laughs> a lot of people follow him, right? And so it's a major yeah. thing to have him come out and speak against Joe Biden. It's a it is major thing. I mean, to see again, there's no other option but Donald Trump. And I agree with you. Flashpoint is not Trump channel, right? We understand. Oh, it absolutely is. Come on. And right. that. And again, I like who do they think they're fooling here? I 100 percent appreciate the fact that he right now is the leader of the policies that we all stand behind and we would support any person that is for those right. policies. And the moment that Donald Trump or anybody, for that matter, comes against the word of God, we, the voice of the Holy Spirit, right. will open our mouths and speak directly against that. I don't care how many times I get to talk to him. He sent me a little letter yesterday. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm very thankful for the letter that came, but a handwritten letter. But I talking about Donald Trump sent. Mark Burns, a handwritten letter. 
Um, I don't know if that's true, but it wouldn't surprise me. He does know Donald Trump. Again, he knows Mark Burns will speak, thus say up the Lord. And that's one of the reasons why I believe he's going to make amazing 47s, because he do listen to those men and women of God that are in his ear. Uh, but yes, Charlemagne the God is not a fan. He is not a God. He is that's a right. false God. There's but yeah. one living God, and his name is Jesus Christ. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. You can tell I got a lot of hurt. I've been waiting to say that for a long time. <laughs> Jesus, dude. To Charlotte, man, I'm proud to be Uncle Tom. Uh, matter of fact, I think I'm labeled as the number one Uncle Tom, and and I'm proud of it. <laughs> that is psychotic, straight up. All right. Hey, 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 hey Gene, can, yes, can, can I say one thing about what Mark was saying? Because I think he's right. If anybody will stand for these things, they will be supported. And what he just mentioned about the border, and you're probably going to get to this. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm jumping in, into this topic too soon. But what happened with the Supreme Court today and in, in, in saying that the, the feds can go cut that wire, I promise you, if Greg Abbott will it will stay firm, if he'll stand up and say, no, we're not going to let you do that, we're going to stand our ground on this, the American people will stand with him. Yeah, so he's saying he wants Abbott to commit sedition. He wants him to ignore the ruling of the Supreme Court and do it anyway. That's insane. He's asking for civil war right now. Even from these blue cities. So all across the right. nation, people are sick and tired of this, but you've got to have some people that are willing to say no, not only to Joe Biden, but now they're going to have to say no to the Supreme Court. It's literally saying no to the federal government. Federal right. government, you failed at your job, and under Article 1, Section 10, we're going to do our job as a state. Amen. It doesn't get more disturbing than this. Like, I have to say, um, Biden could absolutely deputize the texas national guard like now and force them to do what he wants not deputize him but take control because he's the leader he is ultimately um the person in control of the texas national guard and every other national guard and the military in general he's absolutely in control but it would cause a deeply ugly rift that would risk biden losing the election again or just losing it and i agree with you 100 percent, which is rare uh, all right uh pastor hank i want to give you a chance to comment on this before we go to break well i think that you know i think of a scripture here in the book of isaiah that you're going to see more and more a wise man's heart ecclesiastes 10 2 is at the right hand more and more people are going to come over and see that there is certain benefits about doing what's right but more there is certain benefits interesting than that doing what god said and that always is right but then it says this but a fool's heart is at his left and that's really what the agenda of the left has been it's been foolishness it's been insanity it's been perversion it's been corruption and more and more people are going to jump over and begin to do what's right and it's going to establish a unity and an order in this country i want to say mark burns you are greatly respected and loved by many, many in this country. And we thank God for your stand. And I tell you what, the Lord is absolutely you. anointing you for this time. And, right. I, and, and I'm telling you, God is very, very pleased with you because you're not bowing down to, to anyone else and what they're desiring. You're standing with God and you're standing with your country. So it's an honor to know you and you are greatly loved in this country. This is just truly deeply disgusting these guys are disgusting Amen. So thank you for thank what you so you've much. done and what you're wow. doing all right we're thank gonna take you. a break after the break we're talking about alex soros don't go away be right back oh my god alex soros if you guys don't know alex soros he's george soros's son and he's taking control of the hedge fund basically that soros runs he's stepping in for george because george is just kind of retired now and, uh, of course, that comes with, like, anti-Semitic, extremist, nutcase views coming out of the woodwork, hating Alex Soros, talking about how evil he is, and now he's taking over for his dad, he's running the world in his stead, and all this other junk. It's nuts, dude. Anyway, let me know what you think about it in the comments. These people need help. Seriously, get help, people.